the six till eight debate on proper sport. Every Wednesday evening, you can join Castleford Tigers players Oliver Holmes and Jai Hitchcock live in the proper sports studio for the six to eight debate. Now, the show it continues to grow, and we welcome everyone to help get stuck in on all matters surrounding the greatest game. And over the past few weeks, we've been very fortunate to have some terrific guests, like the man famous for the best ever commentary, Mick Morgan. Uh, I once come home from school and I was eight chuffed, and my mum says, "What was we chuffed for, Michael?" I says, "Teacher asked a question." There's a 39 in class and there's not in me, no answer. Oh, she said, that was good, Michael, one more question. She's always farting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> We've even had the 2017 Man of Steel, Luke Gale, join us in the studio to discuss the perils of getting sin binned. Remember when I got, um, I got sin binned in Catalan for, uh, I thought referee had a few bad calls. We scored last last second to win game, and I just I think I clapped. All I said was, uh, you, did your, <laughs> "You did your best today, mate," and it just went yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to figure out where Ollie ranks among the gingerhead players in Super League. So I he think is. he's the top most meter maker for forwards this year. Yeah. He's, he's the best ginger player in the comp. I can't argue with him. <laughs> right. How can I argue? He's, he's in England squad. <laughs> There's no way I can argue. Hey, listen, mate, right? Luke Thompson's dropped out and we need a ginger. You're the second best ginger in Super League. I'll take it. Are you the second, are you the second best ginger, though? Well, I don't know, but according to Wayne Bennett... What other gingers have we got floating about? So let us know who do you think's the best ginger in Super League. Of course, you can catch up with the podcast every week on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, wherever you want to, and join us live every Wednesday for the 6 till 8 debate. Rugby League and much, much more. The 6 till 8 debate with Ollie and Jai this is proper sport this is LS11 Well, good morning. Welcome along to uh, LS11 here on uh, Proper Sport. My name is Darren Harper in the studio with me as ever. It is uh, Ryan Wilson from the Pigeon Detectives. Morning, mate. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad at all, mate. Not too bad at good. all. We've been enjoying the weather. It's been all right, hasn't it? Do you know what? I'm not complaining about the weather. We don't no. get enough of it. Yeah, it's been a bit hot and sticky on a night and whatnot, but... Um, Bought a fan, and it's pretty good. Go, you can't go back, can't go wrong with it. Had a few barbecues. I no, can't, right, can't complain. Um, and uh, joining us in the studio, very special guest this morning, former Leeds United manager, Huddersfield Town, Bradford City, uh, Sunderland, Preston. It, it is Simon <laughs> Grayson is in the studio. Morning, Simon. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah. You, you've been enjoying this weather as well? I certainly have. When you've got no work to go to, you can enjoy your back garden, <laughs> you can sit on a sun lounger, you can play golf as often as you want to do. We have a few holidays, so uh, yeah, bring it, keep it, keep it, keep, uh, it, keep it coming, keep it going. Uh, we've got loads to come on LS11. Uh, we're live on Facebook, we're live on our website as well. Uh, so if you want to get involved, get involved in the comments, of course, uh, this morning. And uh, we've got uh, a couple of pairs of tickets to give away as well this morning uh, to uh, Leeds United up against Bolton in a bit of VIP luxury. Two seats in the box are up for grabs. All you've got to do is answer and review on the podcast. There were some issues with yeah. it last week. There were uh, some issues, weren't there? There were some issues with it last week. Uh, so um, we're opening up again for this week, OK? Right, that's um, fair enough. The who are you from last week? I think most people got it. Yeah, they did. Um, the clue number one, I signed professional terms for Leeds at the age of 16. I was born in Glasgow in 1948. I think that pretty much said it all. <laughs> it was, of course... Mr. Eddie Gray. It was Eddie Gray. Um, so I don't know if you've got it right, uh, but this week, what you need to do is go to your favourite podcast app, download the latest episode of LS11, like and subscribe, leave a five-star review with your answer in the comments, and we'll pick a winner for in next week's show. Uh, we'll have two winners out. There's two, tic- uh, two pairs of tickets up for grabs. Uh, you need to leave your Twitter and email address. I'll give you clue number one uh, to who are you. That's coming up in a few minutes' time. It's LS11 on Proper Sports on this uh, third. Thursday morning, a different morning Thursday morning. Morning. Thursday morning. You're listening to LS11 on Proper Sport. Uh, well, good morning. A more formal welcome uh, to you. Um, the big, s- the season starts this weekend, it Ryan. It starts, yeah. It technically starts on Friday. Derby are playing Reading. Of oh, course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which uh, Mr. Frank Lampard's first game in in football management, really. Isn't it? Yeah. That'll be interesting to see how they do. I wonder if they'll have Vidra or not. 
That'd be an interesting one, wouldn't it? That's been a very interesting yeah. uh, debacle, hasn't yeah. it, uh, recently? There's no doubt about that. Well, Frank's come out and said last night that nobody's been knocking the door down to sign him. So maybe we might sort of get him at a bargain basement price, but it just depends what him and his agent want fees-wise, doesn't it? Simon, as a manager, when you have to deal with uh, uh, players and, and, and players' wage demands, is that something you get involved with nowadays or, or not? Um, I think it's a mixed bag, really. Sort of, really, the sort of protocol that I've normally had at, at Leeds and Preston and other clubs is that I identify the players with my chief scout, do the work, research, etc., uh, and then move the finances onto the chief executive, um, Sean Harvey at Leeds, Peter Ridsdale at Preston, and uh, others, and let them sort of. Uh, um, wheel and deal with the agents etc it's uh, I get involved a little bit they'll come back to me and say look this is a deal that we've structured what do you think to it do we need to go a little bit further to secure the deal do you think we're paying over the odds etc again so it's just sort of having an input but I don't really get involved in all that uh, nitty gritty stuff I'll leave that to the people uh, who get paid for doing that <laughs> <laughs> can imagine it's a bit yeah. of a minefield I, I would imagine on the outset side what, what do you think to this Vidra deal because obviously Apparently we've been working weeks and weeks and weeks on it and there's rumours that he'd wanted silly wages and, the, you know, fair enough, the club can't afford to pay silly wages, I get that. Um, but it kind of seems to be wasting a lot of people's time. I mean, is that, is that kind of a, a common well, thing? Well, I, th- I just think that during the summer months, there's so many rumours about who's coming and who's going at every football club up and down the land. Um, and the one thing that you are going to get with Vidra is you're going to get a good player, but good players don't come cheap. So no. be, the fee will be very expensive. The wages, would they fit into Leeds United's wage structure? At this moment in time, I'm not privy to what the, the, the highest paid player is but he would be certainly I would think yeah. he'd have to be the highest paid player does that cause any, a little bit of trouble with the rest of the squad that they then want to be on the level playing field with him um, obviously signed Patrick Banford the last couple of days are, are they able to afford to sign two big star- signings like that um, but it's it makes the last what we're talking well it's just it, about a week just a week it? yeah a week yeah, before a week, the, uh, the, the window shuts tonight yeah. and uh, so there's going to be plenty of uh, rumours chat about who's going to be coming and going but if Leeds United manage to get uh, Vidra on board then it'll be a, another fantastic signing yeah I agree uh, it will be a, a, an amazing signing. What, what have you made of uh, Leeds United uh, this summer? Because it's it's been sort of a it's been a weird one, hasn't it? Really, <laughs> well, <since> that just <laughs> sums it up straight away, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Leeds United. It <laughs> <laughs> but it's always been weird with Leeds United, hasn't yeah. it? Recently, but um, uh, what, what if you, what's your thoughts? I mean, uh, with Paul Heckingbottom at the end of last season, he almost was seemed to be given almost like a poison chalice he, it wasn't his team and, and, and he didn't really get a chance he didn't see yeah I think look the way the season panned out wasn't ideal for, for, for the football club um, and then you get to the summer months and it's just been so many things have dragged on it was quite not inevitable but there's so many strong rumours going around that Paul was going to lose his job and then what was it two three weeks after the end of the season that he actually did maybe that could have been done earlier um, done a little bit better um, but then he left and then it dragged on trying to bring Bielsa in um, to get him over the line with with again with these summer months can be so frustrating for, for supporters in general really because they're just wanting new players in straight away but you don't go getting the, the first players that are available because others may come available yeah. but it's just been a, a waiting game and and you just come back to what's happened recently with the new manager coach head coach whatever you want to call him now is that he has come into this football club with the assurances that he's going to be given funds without a shadow of a doubt they don't get the attra- they don't appoint an, a coach um, of his level of quality without assurances that he's not not going to be able to spend some money so um, people have had to be patient you can see a few, bit of the fruition over the last week or so with Banford and Douglas coming in and Harrison from Man City so the signs are looking good at this moment in time let's just see where the next seven day goes as well yeah, yeah. I, I agree I mean you know last season were quite a big talk that Leeds wage cap were around about £15,000 a week and we seem to have sort of blown that out of the water spent £7 million on, on Bamford and you know, we've not spent money anywhere near that in seven in million. Years, you could only have dreamt of spending that on a full team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you would have got us in a Premier League on seven million easy, wouldn't you say? Come on, admit it. I would have. I only needed about a million. I thought I was yeah. a centre half a shot, but uh, <laughs> seven million would have probably helped us, and obviously it would have kept a lot of the players that we uh, we had to sell at the time. Yeah. 
but it's so it's it's really positive in that respect. I mean, you've got to kind of think the World Cup's on as well, and that has a big knock on effect. Yeah, we're not buying necessarily players out directly out of the teams in the World Cup, but you know, a lot of the bigger teams are, which will free up a lot of other players. So we've got to take that into account. Um, it has it appeared. To, I mean, even this time last week, we did the show and the first show of, of uh, first LS11 of the season and. Like I was a little bit sort of negative. I want so positive, really, and I can. Um, you were a bit negative, last yeah. Week, and it, it, but because it was just frustrating at the time. Like we, we pretty. What much a just, difference a week makes. What a right? difference what a week makes. What a difference week makes. <laughs> and the caliber of player we brought in, it's yeah. a step up. You know, um, we're not bringing in players that are um, just as good. Or, or just behind as the squad players um, than, yeah. than the, the current starting eleven. We're kind of bringing players in that will get into the starting eleven. I think that's a, that's the sort of issue that supporters have at times that behind the scenes it's going on all the time. Yeah, you don't yeah. know who you, who the manager, the coach, the chief execs are, are speaking to agents wise, players wise, and you might have a deal just waiting to get over the line. The World Cup, as I said, has not really helped too much because it's a knock on effect. The Premier League will not release their players because they're going on pre season tours where they need twenty. 24, 26 players to be able to put two different teams out then they decide that they're going to go and sign their players which allows the prim- um, the championship players to get their players and then it's a knock-on effect right yeah, the way yeah. through the football league so it's, it is don't think that because nothing's been happening at a certain period of the summer that the manager or the chief exec or the um, <laughs> sporting director has sat on a beach doing nothing no, no. believe me uh, your phone is going all the time and you are trying to secure deals yeah no no I, I kind of I kind of said that as well I said I'm sure they are working really hard behind the scenes but it's just the, the club's been really really um, quiet they're keeping the cards really close to the chest the, even like the pre-season games Bielsa's is not doing any kind of media the, the club's hardly doing any media um, it, it's, there's a lot of fans kind of saying we just want to be you know, spoke to what, what yeah. kind of not necessarily they're not going to put out statements about exactly what's going on but the, the clubs have been really quiet recently and I think that's kind of made fans a little bit more sort of um, tetchy but but then again a week later we, we signed some great players you know Bamford a lot of Middlesbrough play, uh, fans are really disappointed to see him go they're kind of saying that you know Pulis is not really giving him the chance but maybe he's not like a Pulis player that's fair enough um, you know on the flip side a lot it's a big debate we'll probably chat about this in a little bit about um, Ronaldo Vieira leaving Leeds United Leeds United fans are split and um, you know maybe Bielsa didn't fancy Vieira so it's kind of the same thing if Pulis didn't fancy Bamford don't mean he's a bad player or anything I think we've got a great player in, in Bamford and Jack Harrison looks brilliant um, really good sort of winger I think we needed that I think I think Alioski is a good player but I think we need to be looking a little bit better if I'm being honest to, to push so it's yeah, a week later here I'm sat here again <laughs> you're feeling but, positive now but with now. a big smile on my face yeah it's, it's great it's good yeah That's, they've done it at the right time haven't they yeah. with bringing in the players what were your thoughts Simon on, on the well first of all when they, they announced that Marcelo Bielsa uh, was coming in I think there was a lot of Leeds fans that were like well, well, I've, not really, I've not really heard of Marcelo Bielsa but in football in circles this guy is an absolute legend yeah he's a character as well I think when you, you uh, <laughs> actually do a little bit of more research on him you find out that uh He's got a certain side to him as well that uh, <laughs> can either make a football club successful or it can sort of um, go the other way. And and I think that's a common theme that people I spoke to about him that they're looking, I think, at the Wolves model that they're thinking last year we're going to play an expansive way. We're looking to bring in certain types of players. We've got this foreign coach coming in who who knows all about the game um, and have put a lot of the eggs in one bas- in the basket in terms of um, not spent the same sort of money over the last few years, which they have done this summer so far. Um, I do think it's going to be a, a real interesting first couple of months of the season really because if it starts really well then the whole place will just galvanise the city and anything could happen if it doesn't quite go his way with a few results early on in the season then he might get a little bit etchy not really understand or or feel comfortable in what he's doing I don't know I don't know the bloke Mm. I think the one big thing that he needs to do is probably try and get a grasp of the English language because that must be so difficult for the dressing room and uh, and the staff around him uh, and I'm sure he's working hard to try and do that but it's good it is going to when you get a, um, a coach on board like him you know that there's going to be some ups and downs over the next few uh, few months and weeks and and that, again we said that typifies Leeds United doesn't it <laughs> ups and downs 
yeah. 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 it's in the song isn't it so, quite right too yeah. it is really yeah. um, so uh, signings in the last week I mean Barry Douglas I think there's a lot of people that were sort of like there was eyes raised with that it was like yeah. wow this is one of one of the best players from last season signing on suddenly and, and for an absolute steal it seems yeah. you see these unbelievable fees that players are going for now and then it's reported we got him for like three four million something like that yeah, about three it. million yeah sounds like mm. an absolute bargain doesn't it i mean this guy's quality yeah look he was he was the outstanding left back um in the division last year and he's he's obviously going to be the type of player that bielsa likes an attacking fullback getting up and down getting crosses in working closely with uh, an attacking uh, wide player as well and and Wolves have probably looked at it and thought they're going to go to another level and he's not going to play too much so recoup a little bit of money while they can do and obviously Leeds have, have benefited from that by uh, knowing it is available and then being able to sanction the deal so I, th- I think it's an, a, a great deal for Leeds United because of um, his assists his uh, set ball set pieces uh, delivery um, I think it's a real good signing yeah, it's really yeah good. I totally oh, agree we were saying like Luke yeah. Ayling on one side yeah, Douglas on the other yeah that's it's brilliant. exciting, isn't it? It is. Yeah, Luke Ellings, top goal scorer in pre-season. <laughs> well, oh, probably, yeah, probably, right, maybe yeah. joint with Roof, actually. Well, that doesn't sell off at strikers, then, does it? <laughs> well, that, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Bamford. Exactly, that's why we need more strikers. But, um, but yeah, no, Luke, Luke, Luke's been transformed into you know, a right wing back and um, and he's been doing a great job. You know, seeing him that, that high up the pitch, it's great to see. And then you've got a really proven player in, in Barry Douglas on the left-hand side. It's really exciting because I think once we sold Charlie Taylor to, or left to Burnley, uh, we, we really missed that kind of... Um, we missed that quality on the left hand side. I think. Yeah. I think so we had we had standing players essentially. We had Berardi, um, Vernon, and Anita at some points, and then we brought young t- um, Tom Pierce through. And Debock had a couple of games and went wild at Derby, and we never saw him again for the season. But so we kind of really lacked on that left hand side. So now we've got one of the best players in the league on the left hand side. It's really exciting because you kind of found a lot. A lot used to go down. Paul Luke Ailing. He absolutely worked his socks off every game he played in Luke Ailing because he was kind of the sort of the, the, the best sort of fullback we had um, mm. because the, the, the left fullbacks were always standings. And so this season it's going to be brilliant because, like, say, Barry Douglas top assist last year our joint top assist last year and then um, now you've got Luke Haley on the other side we've got options and it's it's brilliant it's really really positive and I think we kind of that's what we lacked sometimes last year um, you know Lasaga got, got, got quite a lot of stick last year and you know sometimes you could say maybe we didn't quite get the service that were required for a big lad but you know, obviously now there shouldn't be an excuse for our strikers. Um, you've got Luke Ayling and, and Douglas pinging them in, and then you'll have obviously the the wider players anyway, whether it's Harrison or Alioski or Hernandez, whoever's going to play on that sort of left and right hand side. It's good, positive. Uh, it is positive. Uh, it's LS11 on uh, Proper Sport this morning. Simon Grayson is in the studio with us. If you've got some uh, questions for Simon, um, we'll be taking those uh, in a short wee while and we'll talk about Simon's time at uh, Leeds United as well. Uh, but uh, first, let's give you the first clue for this week's Who Are You? Very difficult again this week. <laughs> That's what I'll tell you that. Uh, all you need to do is identify the famous Leeds United player manager from the following clues and be in with a chance to win uh, two tickets to see Leeds United versus Bolton and a bit of VIP luxury with that amazing cheese board at half time and a blanket. <laughs> Not that you're going to need that at the moment. Yeah. Uh, two seats in the box are up for grabs. All you've got to do is answer and review. Go to your favourite podcast app, download the latest episode of LS11, like, subscribe, leave a five star review with your answer and your Twitter and AIM email address in the comments and we'll pick two winners in next week's show. Good luck. Clue number one, I am a centre forward who scored 59 goals for Leeds United. Mm. I'm a centre forward who scored 59 goals for Leeds United. I genuinely don't know who this is. Really? No, not yet. Oh, right. Darren, 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 Darren segment this. I, I, he doesn't tell me who he picks. So it's, <laughs> it's a challenge for me as well. It's a challenge for you. Yeah. Okay, we'll give you another clue yeah. uh, in a short wee while. It's L- LS11 yeah. on uh, proper sport. Uh, I hope you're uh, uh, enjoying So uh, during the off-season, do you, has it been golfing for, for you since uh, since leaving Bradford? Well, this is the first time in um, 32 years that I've not been involved in a pre-season. So when I walked oh, wow. across, across the road in Tel 
Callum Road as a 16 year old in 1986 uh, I've always been involved in pre-season training always been employed in work so if somebody offered me that uh, when I walked in at 16 then I'd certainly snap the hands off at it and uh, I had an easy option to take a two year deal at Bradford that they wanted to offer me but I just didn't feel that it was the right thing for me at that particular time and and maybe I needed a little bit more of a rest because it is so intense being a manager 12, 13 years now and just short 700 games it, uh, it's not like a play they go away on holiday uh, when the season finishes that's when your busiest time comes because you're going you, even if you are on holiday you've got calls coming in on your phone you're looking to see who's on the internet who's available or the rumours of other clubs speaking to chief execs speaking to players agents and before you know it you come back to work with the players and it's like you've not had a holiday so that's been really nice this summer that being able to do that I've been um, golfing a little bit I've been to the Isle of Wight festival for four days oh, very nice got, got a motor home and went down there with a, a couple of mates and uh, <laughs> nice. really enjoyed um, doing that really so I've been doing things that I've not been able to do um, while I've been employed in football all this time to the point of last week the last pre-season weekend um, before the season starts my missus drags me off to the cinema at three o'clock to watch Mamma Mia <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad it's maybe got so maybe I need to get back to work yeah. possibly <laughs> could have gone and seen Mission Impossible uh, I mean well, come well. on Mamma must have been my wife is after to go and see Mamma yeah. Mia I've, I've uh, resisted so far resisted <laughs> so far um, but obviously you're still quite keen on, on getting back into management are you hoping that's something that's going to happen sooner rather than later yeah look I've had a few offers since um, since I left Bradford as well and I'd, again they weren't the ones that I wanted to take for both home and abroad um, and I'm just going <laughs> to wait for the ine- inevitable thing is that sometime September, October, November <laughs> a manager or a few managers will lo- lose their jobs and that's just the nature of our job and we go into so I'm I'm certainly still hungry to, to go back into work and uh, uh, but it's going to be the right one for me I think over the, the last few weeks and the next few weeks coming I've doing quite a lot of media work for different um, outlets and that so that's going to keep me involved I'll be out watching games I'm going to go to different grounds and training grounds to catch up with different managers and, and still keep learning as I said six seven hundred games under my belt still got to keep improving and learning and and I'm going to go and see some high profile managers that are going to allow me to do that do you enjoy the the media work the, the media side of it the sort of the co-commentary and that sort of thing well when my alarm went off at quarter to six to get here this morning that was quite <laughs> <laughs> that's slightly different to the media work that I've been doing <laughs> over the last few weeks. This is proper media work. Yeah, this, this, this is hardcore. Hard 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 that's yeah. right, that's right. <laughs> no, I, I don't mind it. I, I did something for Sky the other day. I do quite um, core commentary and punditry <laughs> and uh, bits and bobs. So, I do, yeah, I, I do enjoy it, actually. It gets you out and about. It gets you meeting people and uh, keeps you um, your finger on the pulse as such. Um, it's probably, it would be remiss of us not to talk about your time while, uh, when you were uh, at Leeds United. How did that all come about? You, were, uh, I think you were at Blackpool at the time, weren't it? Yeah, it was, um, it was strange because I was at Blackpool in the Championship and Leeds were in League One and I got a call from Sean Harvey that um, Gary McAllister had just sacked him and uh, would I be interested in coming? And it was a bit of a um, uh, difficult not decision because that I was going to walk here without a shadow of doubt it was just trying to get out of Blackpool they wanted to keep hold of me and um, anyway the, the, a legal battle commenced but I came here on the Monday and uh, yeah I had three and a half years of well just over three uh, I can't remember how long it is now. Nine, yeah, about, <laughs> yeah just, yeah, over, just, three three, years, just over three years yeah. and uh, it, yeah it was fantastic but as I said there was a legal battle that uh, that Blackpool were not going to let me go for nothing and so uh, but I got here and, and obviously thoroughly enjoyed my time here we had some some funny moments with some funny results but obviously some great moments as well and uh, it's been it was something that I've cherished because I've, even though I only played a couple of times for the first team it's I've been managed I've been able to support the club play for the club and and manage the club so uh, wow. fulfilled a, a lifetime ambition there can't be there many people that have, can say that about their hometown club can they really the, the hometown club probably not really no, no there's a few that have probably um, played and managed like Eddie and, and Gary Mack and that have yeah, played and managed yeah. the club but um, but it's not the home well I know it's kind of support stri- it, yeah. strictly not your hometown no, no. But, um, but you're a Leeds fan so it's a little bit different really but uh, yeah. I'm sure people like Eddie I mean Eddie lives and breathes the club you know and he's been here since he was what, a little teenager three, wasn't he <laughs> yeah exactly so um, yeah so I mean that that's that's brilliant in itself I mean um, so 
were quite a, a bit of a no-brainer side when Leeds came knocking then obviously you're a fan of the club and, and everything even though you were managing at a higher level technically yeah look I had a few opportunities to leave Blackpool at the time but there weren't the right opportunities um, and it was it was a no-brainer even though Leeds were in, in League One it was going to be only a question of time before they managed to get back to the Championship and I felt that I'd, I'd learnt my trade for three years at Blackpool and um, was ready to, to come and um, to work for this football club and because if I turned it down you never know when you're going to get that you might never get yeah. that opportunity again and so I was I was confident in my ability that I'll get be able to get the team going and um, and ultimately try and get the team promoted which we managed which to do Which you did I mean to be honest with you Simon was probably like responsible for two of the biggest moments in Leeds recent history the well that league the, one promotion the league one promotion against Bristol I mean that were I mean I've never seen Ellen Road like <laughs> that was that. mental that was, that that was, was crazy mental. you know um, and then obviously the result against our not not well, I, I, I can't swear on the radio side. <laughs> <laughs> rivals. That, that team rivals over, over across the, the wrong side of yeah, the Pennines. Yeah. The, the FA Cup game. Um, I mean, oh God, I mean, yeah. the thing is, the fans still sing about that today. Yeah, I know. You know that, and it's um, it's absolutely brilliant. And, and funny enough, I watched the highlights of that recently. We're just on some program or whatever. That FA Cup greatest, not greatest moments, whatever you call it, but some kind of things like that. And it was just brilliant seeing you and your coaching staff sort of absolutely jumping for joy on the sidelines of Old Trafford it, it, and it kind of invokes good memories I mean that particular game I had lads from band round at my house because at that particular time I worked first well, first one at band who had Sky Sports HD so I was like oh come round my oh, lads got Lord. a big telly it's in HD <laughs> so we came round it sounds so old now doesn't it it does yeah it does and, um, and um, I just got a cat a new cat a kitten and, and it were in a little cage and basically five lads jumping up screaming terrified the cat <laughs> and to this day she's wary of men I think she I think we're scared her to Leeds this United day scared her. Leeds United whenever scared. that game comes on the telly she goes into a, like a shell oh, I bet honestly when <laughs> think what's going to happen when football's on and I jump up going <clears throat> you know you start getting a bit excited when you've almost scored or whatever cat looks at me and it's like it's like terror in its eyes it's like gives her a flashback bless her but yeah no so um that's brilliant Sai. I mean like I said two moments in recent history that Leeds fans still talk about today I mean obviously we're, we're praying for this next moment which is going to be leaving the championship yeah um, but you know as, as it stands you know you've obviously made a lot of history for yourself and memories you'll never forget but for Leeds fans you've made a lot of history as well yeah in, well, obviously in, in it was a fantastic time. year and it probably sums up sort of Leeds United to a certain degree that sort of the ups and downs that we had that oh, season that, was, that whole season you know what I mean it, it sort of, yeah. that we um, we were doing really well in, t in the league that we go to Old Trafford and cause obviously the biggest upset of the round um, I remember going into Sir Alex office after the game and he sort of said to me it was really busy in his office because all my stuff from the kit meant everybody wanted to be in their office yeah. and stuff like <laughs> that and you go to Hereford away and there's only mean snods in there so, <laughs> uh, and so we're in there and, and he sort of said in, and he was very complimentary he said we deserved to win which was really nice of him and I'm sure it sort of took him a lot to say that given uh, what had happened and who he was playing but he, he was one of them that sort of a, a crowded room he said to me he says in his strong Scottish accent he says do you pressure and I didn't really understand what that meant to be fair so I asked him and he said well do you understand what pressure is I went oh well to a certain degree obviously being a manager he said no pressure is now um, on you to get Leeds promoted because I've got three grand on you to get promoted <laughs> or, or something like that it was a, la it was a decent amount of money oh said, my God. that's to get you promoted I went alright you better lend me some players <laughs> <laughs> he was, apparently he always has a, a very nice bottle of wine uh, after the game for, for the opposing yeah. manager is that is that true? yeah that's, yeah, he did do that and he, he did say to me do you prefer red or white I says look I don't re drink red I'll just have white if you don't mind given the colours of uh, Leeds and Man United so, <laughs> I don't think he understood what I was yeah, on about, yeah. but I knew what I was on about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. I like that wow. one. Yeah. Uh, it was, we've had loads of uh, uh, comments coming in already, of course, with uh, Simon being here. Uh, Gary says, Simon, absolute legend. Uh, the Bristol game will go down in history uh, for me. I think a lot of people uh, would say that. I remember listening to that, and Tom, <sighs> Tom Kerwin... Um, Tom Kerwin was in tears, wasn't he? He was in tears game. at the end of it. I, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard uh, Tom Kerwin that emotional yeah. 
um, after a game. It was quite a, quite a feat. It though, was wasn't unbelievable because, like we said, we we were doing really well in the league. Then we stuttered and we then we got back on track. And then it, everything was in our hands. The last game of the season, knowing that if we won the game, we would get promoted. Um, remember waking up on the morning of the game, going out to uh, walk my dog as I used to do on a Saturday morning, and thinking, right, what's the team going to be? Because I, I, I always always had a rough idea what it was going to be, but never sort of finalised it till the morning uh, till we got in at lunchtime. Um, and I'd left Jermaine out a couple of games before because he'd and, and not really been doing the stuff that I wanted him to do um, and then I just decided that it was right time he, 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 he loved being that big player you know what I mean he sort of it inspired him I just thought this is his, the stage is set for him to come back and, and made him captain and it was an uh, surreal day really that you're there and it's a full house 36, 37,000 and, and then it was, there was an expectancy level that it was just going to happen because we were only yeah. playing Bristol Rovers but you, Max gets sent off and you think God, oh, 10 men yeah, here we go yeah. then you go 1-0 <laughs> down and I always remember saying at half time um, as we walked down the tunnel to the I um, can't think of his name now uh, the left back for, um, for oh, Bristol Rovers you were in with Carlson Havoc on it if we would have got beat he might have well, he I, might not met it out on the road alive and I got into his head a little bit because <laughs> I, I can't think of his name now but anyway I'll remember yeah. it in soon but as he's walking down the tunnel I said look just remember second half where you're going to be playing he says what do you mean I said you're going to be playing left back in front of the cop the furthest point away from the tunnel if we lose this game this is going to be a, more or less a riot on this pitch <laughs> and all the best getting off this pitch right and he just looked at me and thought oh god yeah <laughs> and I was it was a tongue in ch uh, cheek uh, comment but also I was just making him aware of what, yeah, what could fair, happen yeah, yeah. and then obviously they go 1-0 up and it's like oh come on we need to really dig deep and then I made a couple of substitutions Johnny Alston came on and then we got the equaliser and it was as if we were playing with 14, 15 men and they were down to 8 men or something like that because the whole crowd, I've never experienced anything in my time playing or managing where the crowd was just so intense behind the team and then obviously um, Jermaine coming up the winner and and the the end of that story with the, the fullback was that... Um, with a minute to go he's playing right wing right next to the sun on, uh, he stood right in front of the bench and he, he winked to me says I'm going to be first off the pitch <laughs> uh, Jerry's texted in he said it's uh, uh, is it Clark or Duffy was the yes. winger uh, Duffy the one who scored but it was a left back a uh, big blonde haired lad oh yeah. god I can't think of someone will tweet yeah. Yeah. someone will tweet um, uh, Kev says uh, what was Simon's best signing whilst at Leeds uh, it's always difficult that really because you, you you can spend money and get the value for it um, uh, like when you look at Ross McCormack you paid 400,000 for Ross and went for 12 million mm. yeah um, the, the two real inspirational ones for me were the ones who were the real uh, epitomise what you needed to play and what you needed to play for Leeds United and they both came on free transfers one was Paddy Kisnorbo and the other one was Richard Naylor hard as nails the two oh, centre halves right. yeah, yeah. Um, Le Leeds lad was, was Richard my captain uh, Paddy would run through a brick wall for you as well and these two were sort of real top top characters in the dressing room on the pitch and they'd do anything for you so yeah. you, you had that type of character and then you bring Max Gradel in who, who could do anything on a pitch for I think we paid £100,000 for Max and yeah, stuff like that so um, yeah and, and the big part of it was as well was developing certain players on, a, on the coaching front on a, on a day to day basis you, to try and make Snodgrass better try and make Beckford and, and Becchio better try and improve um, Johnny House and, and, and Bradley Johnson as it was at the time and, mm. and you get got a lot of satisfaction from from bringing them players through Charlie Taylor Tom Lees were players that were only 18 when I give them the debuts and, and you do you get a lot of satisfaction from seeing their careers develop because you've played a big part in it yeah. well if you look at your League One squad you know the majority of them went on to play Premier League football in the end yeah you know um, so you're obviously doing a good job and whoever I mean I know brought a few young lads through the ranks but the the players that you brought in like your like Snodgrasses etc and all them kind of players that 
it's, it's very good scouting really isn't it you know to mm. sort of see in the end that these guys are all playing Premier League football it was funny with Snodgrass when I was at Blackpool I had two players came on trial um, from Livingston and um, I knew they both had a reputation for, for sort of enjoying sort of going enjoying go, life going, enjoying <laughs> life is better good phrase <laughs> as, as, well as 18, 19, 20 year olds whatever they were at the time Yeah. so I took them away, both away on pre-season both fantastic players but I thought I cannot sign them to, for Blackpool to living in Sin City as such yeah, so yeah. anyway I signed one of them one of them and that was Wes Hulan who obviously went on to have a great yeah. career and the other one I sent back was Snodgrass oh really <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow but obviously managed to work with him later on and I, I still keep in touch with him now probably probably does a the good thing about sort of these lads they're all good lads as well and um, still have sort of communication with Paddy who's in in Australia and, and Snodgrass Jermaine obviously have worked with and Johnny House and all these lads sort of we have sort of still good good um, good communication and uh, keep in touch quite a lot um, we're going to talk more Leeds United uh, yep. we've got to give you another clue now for who are you we're okay. rattling through this today I'll tell you that no doubt about it OK uh, clue number one now this is to win a couple of VIP tickets to Leeds versus Bolton um, uh, which is uh a week or so away? Mm. I can't remember. Yeah, just over a week. Away, All you need to do away. is uh, go to your favourite podcast app, download the latest episode, like, subscribe, leave a five-star review, and then put the answer and your Twitter and email address in the comments, and we'll pick a winner in next week's show. Uh, the first clue, I'm a centre-forward who scored 59 goals for Leeds United. Second clue, Leeds signed me from Celtic for £6 million. All oh, right, yeah. Leeds signed me for see so you've got it now, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, Leeds signed me for himself for six million pounds. I'm a centre forward. He scored fifty nine goals for Leeds United. Who are you? Uh, get in contact with us and uh, uh, go to that favourite podcast app. Download the latest episode and uh, like, subscribe, and put your answer, your Twitter, your email address in the comments, and we'll uh, pick out a few winners uh, next week. Simon Grayson's in the studio with us on uh, LS11 uh, this morning. Loads of comments coming in on uh, Twitter. Uh, Harry says, um, uh, "Was Feddy Bassoni?" one of the worst signings <laughs> Simon made uh, it looked like he'd never seen a ball before uh, he's up there with one or two others as well <laughs> <laughs> so, but what you try and do as a manager you have selective memory you always remember the good <laughs> the ones like ones. McCormick that he signed etc but you obviously try and so, let's see I've just put him out of my mind and I didn't even I forgot we'd signed for yeah. him but I, I think just going back to that you, you never get every signing right course you don't no. but you do your work I remember having him watched and uh, watched a lot of DVDs and he played in Swansea's team the year before and played every game he was attacking fullback. Uh, um, and um, on a free transfer looked a real good signing to be fair but the one thing I don't think he, he was capable of doing was playing in front of the Leeds United faithful and Ellen Road I think he mentally wasn't strong enough to do that uh, and that's what you can find with a lot of players I've found that so many times that they've not been able to handle the pressure of playing at Ellen Road you have to be able to be, do that and be a special player I remember sort of um, in the championship the first year when we were up there and we were pushing on to try and get into the playoffs or automatic, we signed a couple of players and, and they didn't, they weren't able to fulfil their uh, their uh, potential. And that was um, Andrew, uh, not, um, it was, um, oh, who was it? Uh, Jake Livermore and Barry Bannon, both sort of, and they've, uh, gone on they've gone on so, to have yeah. fantastic careers. Yeah. But I know they were younger at, the, at that yeah. particular time, but they couldn't handle playing for uh, Ellen Road. So it's, 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 you have to be a special person. That's the one thing Freddie did have in his um, in his armory was that he was one of the best whistlers I've ever heard. <laughs> whistlers, <Yeah>. that's <laughs> random. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Was it? I would imagine. You know, we've talked about the sort of the highlights. Obviously, the frustrations at that time of working for uh, for Leeds United. And was it was it tough when you know? Johnny House and going when when the, when the players were, were going and, and you know not much you can do about that and it's it's you know fans were frustrated you must have been just as frustrated oh know. definitely you want to keep your your best players and um, when they're being sold it makes it very difficult um, and you just look back of the group of players over a period of, of the two three years that was there if we'd managed to keep every player of, that we'd brought in and, and inherited then we would have had one hell of a team to the point of Casper Schmeichel came in on a free and we had to oh, sell yeah. him the, the following summer for a million pound because he'd only signed a two-year deal and he, w he wasn't going to sign 
at that particular time a new extension so Ken said look if he's not signing we'll, we'll have to sell him I would have loved to have kept him of course I would I didn't want to sell Johnny Alson um, didn't want I wanted Jermaine to stay Jermaine obviously went on to Everton on a free which is a no brainer from his point of view yeah. um, but then you do look at all all the other players that put together it was it was some squad and uh, yeah it's just unfortunate that we won't be able to add it at the right time because we do I did feel that when we went second at Christmas in the first year in the championship I felt this has got a great opportunity to go straight through the division into the Premier League where everybody wanted to be Mm, yeah, mm. certainly felt like that. It did, yeah. Exciting times, and I mean, you know, kind of coming out of League One, that were um, a massive achievement in itself, really, because it were down in the dumps there for a few years, and it, it, it were grim, to be perfectly honest with you. And then there was this big sort of optimism, and like I say, at Christmas we, we were up, up in the, the nice bit of the league, really, and, and unfortunately, it kind of fell through. I mean, what what's What's I, I understand, Si, obviously, like players kind of did, did they get their heads turned, you know, by going to play for potentially bigger clubs? You know, if Premier League clubs come call, calling, I know you'll want to keep the players, but once their heads turned, is it very difficult to keep them, or, or can, can you kind of talk to players and say, look, this is our plans, in next season or two we'll be up there anyway, or, or, or do, do sort of agents as well get in their ears and say, look, this is your opportunity Look, there's, I think um, all them factors do play a part and, and it isn't easy it depends on the type of character that you want you've got certain players that are certainly influenced more than others by their agents who basically are in it for their own purpose to go and make money out of a deal by moving them from club to club they're getting paid so that that's an issue that you have to deal with um, it is very difficult because at the time in the championship we weren't probably big payers or anything like that and when you've got rumours going around that players could go and treble quadruple the money then it is very difficult yeah, exactly. even now when I've got I've been at Preston and other clubs I've lost players because of the influence of, of um, agents and and being able to earn a lot of more money because don't forget it's a short career and players have to look yeah. after their own welfare but the one thing that you did try to, to say especially at Leeds was that this this is one of the biggest clubs you could ever play for and stay with it for an, I don't know, another six, twelve months and let's just see where it goes from yeah. there. But they do get impatient. I remember Max coming to me and saying that um look, I think West Ham were interested in him at times and, and um and then obviously some uh, Saint Etienne got involved. Mm. And they do they do get influenced by it. So it's like you going into to work tomorrow. And I mean, Kaiser somebody. Chiefs asking me if I want to play for him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's sort no, of. of course not. I'm, is that yeah. like a, is that like a promotion? <laughs> no. no, is it? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Because they're you, Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> But it, but it is. There's so many factors. It is very difficult because of every player knows what other players are earning or like to think they do, and they, they have to make as much money as possible. Yeah. The, but there is a few players that will um, not be money orientated. But I think that's becoming uh, a lot fewer than it used to be. Which uh, kind of potentially leads on to, to the next little bit, which we, we haven't really spoken much about, is Ronaldo Vieira's sale. I mean, Ronaldo Vieira, a lot, he's kind of, this is kind of split the Leeds fans from what I've seen on social media and the, their opinions on, on, yeah, let him go or, or no, we should have kept him because obviously he's a young player, he has a lot of potential. I mean, la last season, a few injury issues and he, he, he wasn't at his best last season, but when he was, he seems like a real talent and there's some Leeds fans really disappointed and they're kind of a bit negative towards the club and there's some Leeds fans saying, well, I think if Bielsa don't want him then we've got to trust Bielsa so um, I mean what's your what's your opinions on the Ronaldo Vieira um, sale? look at obviously I'm, I'm not aware of what goes on, on behind the scenes or anything like that but from the outside um, you would you'd think that you'd want to keep the lad he's young he's got a huge amount of potential I'd be very surprised if Bielsa knows 100% about his ability because he's probably he's only worked with him for what two three weeks he's probably yeah. not I know he'll probably watch some of the tapes from last year apparently watched every single game yeah. last, last season but you still got <laughs> see <laughs> if you're what, judging a player in training you need a period of time to, you can't make an opinion after two weeks yeah and you just hope that sort of what's happened in the past at Leeds United players have been sold to fund new ones coming in and it looks like Banford's gone out 
come in, sorry, with Vieira's money. Mm -hmm. You're now hoping that there's still money available to go and spend another X amount of money that would have been still yeah. there to spend if uh, if uh, Vieira had not gone to uh, yeah. Sampdoria. So that's going to be that's going to be proof over the next few weeks. Like when Chris Wood and Charlie Taylor went, their money went towards basically signing three or four other players, but yeah. not sort of on top of and no on of extra of money it, yeah, was yeah. on top of the money that it generated, and and that will be um, sort of evident over the next uh, ten or seven days when the window shuts. But I would have liked to have seen him stay because. I just think that these local lads have come through the academy, they've got a, an affiliation with the city, they know what it's like to play for Leeds and they, they can get a little bit of slack as well from, from the supporters because of they see them as one of their yeah. own as well. I mean, I were really torn by it because last season um, I think he had some kind of tendonitis in his foot um, yeah. which which kind of put him out for quite a while but but he's still kind of a young player and and. and as you know, the championship's a long, hard season. You know, you're playing Saturday, you're playing Tuesday. You kind of think you need an half decent sized squad, really. And Ronaldo Vera certainly fit the bill to stand to, you know, to play. You know, when when you've got a tired Adam Forshaw who's played a tough game against a tough team on Saturday, and then uh, we go away somewhere on a Tuesday and Forshaw's a bit tired, then you can drop Vera in. So it's kind of like Simon says, if um, if we do sign. You know some extra players with the money. I th I think a lot of Leeds fans a lot kind of accept it, um, but it's a tough one really because you don't want to see as young players go because you've kind of got young players at Leeds that we've sold like um, you Lewis Cook. So we're no doubt he was going to be a top player. He, he looked one of the best players on pitch when he were really young playing at Leeds. Bournemouth Lewis Cook, you mean? Bournemouth Lewis Cook, Darren. Yes, yeah, Darren's much. a Bournemouth fan. <laughs> yeah. um, but then on the flip side, there's kind of players what I thought would have a lot of potential and maybe go further and certainly maybe get in the premiership teams and, and they haven't like you yeah, like Alex Mowitz, you know, we sold him to Barnes and Barnes and loaned him out to Oxford and, and I kind of thought, wow, Alex got a young player a year a few seasons back and I kind of thought, I thought he'd be playing slightly at a higher level and, and it kind of not worked out for him and so you kind of sometimes think this might happen with Vieira, he might end up but playing for Sampdoria and then Juventus signing him and then he's, he's playing alongside Ronaldo or similarly yeah. it could be kind of sold to it, it's to gonna, it's, it'd be interesting as well in defence of Leeds is that how much influence uh, Ronaldo had on wanting to leave or not did he want to stay yeah. did he want to go and sort of further his career and go and play for Sampdoria play in Serie A and see where that takes him as well and he might have said behind the scenes that look I don't want to turn down this opportunity. So, and Leeds maybe thought, well, the seven or eight million, whatever they've been quoted of getting, he's going to, it's good money, we'll go and sell him and, and use it to, to finance other deals. So, you don't know how much influence the agent and the player that we yeah. talked about earlier has, has had on the deal as well. There also seems as well, I don't know if you, because there seems, to, obviously, there's a lot of buzz around Leeds because of uh, Marcelo B also being there and um, 11 Sports, uh, Andrea Reggiani's company, they, they're buying up sporting rights left, right, and centre all mm -hmm. over the place so th there's a buzz around the club itself I mean Sky Sports there's a, a thing on Sky Sports tonight um, yeah, leading is. Leeds yeah. United yeah. Uh, a lot of people thought they were just uh, misspelling Reading versus Leeds United <laughs> at some point uh, but so, so there's, there's, does it it's centenary year there just seems to be this sort of like this could be the seat. I mean, I know we've said this before <laughs> yeah. many, many times, but it just sort of feels a little... I don't know if you feel the same, side. It just feels a, a little bit different this season. Well, like you said, it, this time of the year, every club up and down the country think this is, this is going to be yeah. there yeah. yeah and then with come five o'clock on Saturday it's like oh that's it Season, <laughs> season's over already <laughs> so let's hope we're not talking about this at sort of eight o'clock on Sunday night the yeah. Leeds have been yeah. beat by Stoke the first game and the pessimistic um, supporters are out etc but uh, yeah of course there should be I think the owner here now looks like he's he's got a connection with supporters obviously they've had a few mistakes over a period of time as well with a f couple of instances of with the badge etc and other bits but there is a the the signings the the coach coming in and there is that air of optimism that it could be but it's a tough season this year the championship is relentless and there's so many teams that are trying to get to that the golden ticket of getting back to the premier league it's it's going to be the one of the most open but tough, toughest divisions in a long, long time, I think, because I think there's so many clubs that are very close in terms mm. of the squads together that it's. I, I don't think there's any clear favourites for this division and Leeds will come into no. the category of probably yeah. 12 teams that have got a real strong chance of getting promoted this year.
I uh, agree. If you're looking at promotion, actually, from the championship, just on the markets themselves, uh, Stoke are six to four favourites. Yeah, I see that. West yeah. Brom are five to two. Uh, Villa eleven to four. Borough eleven to four. Leeds uh, hundred to thirty. Uh, yeah, so well, they're, they're in the, in the top yeah. six, then, aren't they? Yeah. And, and probably will should be as well. And the teams that you've mentioned there, two of them are ex Premier League clubs. I think Stoke. I think that's the prob- they've got to be the favourites with the squad that they've yeah. got, the money they've spent. Um, but that doesn't guarantee anything. Last year, Middlesbrough were a relegated team and spent forty, fifty million over that transfer mm-hmm. summer, and ended up sort of well uh, missing out on on promotion as well. So yeah. it is going to be so tough for everybody, but. Um, they've got a good a chance as, as many others do they need another striker do you think they need another striker they've got, got Bamford in he's, mm. I think he's going to be Clark. he's only 24 years old yeah, yeah he's been around a long mm. time yeah. got done the rounds in terms of playing league one out on loan um, he's a goal scorer yeah. I just look at them and I think they could still do with a physical presence yeah. as a number nine I know Patrick's taken the number nine shirt, but in terms of yeah. an out and out centre forward somebody to give him a base where they can hold the ball he can hold the ball up he can link in play he can have and I think Patrick Bamford prefers having somebody up alongside him where he can they can take the physical load off him when he can be around the box of like Jermaine did with um, Luciano Luciano was a battering ram when, when I was at Leeds and Jermaine scored most of the goals yeah. and I think I just think that physical presence because it is a tough tough um, season Saturday, Tuesday you need to have different types of players for different types of games so I think that physical striker will be the one that would, they would think that I think that's what we need yeah, but they're not great. they're not no, many uh, around and they're not cheap yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly you need a big brute that, big that's, brute up that's from. the thing you know um, I, I kind of I kind of agree I mean um we had we had it in Lasaga last year, but it didn't quite sort of work out. And Bamford's a very technically good player, and he's a good. And like mm. Simon says, a goal scorer. You know, don't get me wrong, I, I didn't follow Middlesbrough, you know, thoroughly last season, but I saw him score three good goals past us. Well, two good goals, one of them goalkeeper should yeah. have saved it. But um, yeah, I, can, I kind of under, I kind of understand what Simon's saying in, in that respect. But the kind of the way that Bielsa is setting up, and, and kind of the way that Hacking Bottom and Thomas Christensen set up last season, we kind of don't really play. We kind of that, the two strikers. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, like when you you were kind of had Luciano and, and um, uh, Becky and, and Beckford up front, kind of playing sort of off each other. Um, but we all, we kind of playing one up front, and it, for me, it just m- basically means that you kind of your number ten role has to be very important in in supporting the the striker. And and but the thing is that's that's it. Who is the number ten? Because Bamford can play number ten or number nine. So if we do get a big lad up front, then then Bamford can just drop behind and play in that number ten role, and that might work better. But. Um, I think it'd have been interesting if Lasaga was here this year because last year I looked at it and I thought he didn't get enough service. There wasn't mm. enough crosses being put in the box, and every time a cross Lovely. went in, he looked like he could get on the end of things. Yeah, yeah. I know people said he was a bit lazy and this, that, and the other, but when he was in the box, he was handful. He'd get into areas and he'd, he'd strong physically met and, and with his, his heading ability, he looked quite decent in that respect. So I think now when you talk about Erling and um, and Douglas as the two attacking fullbacks, and you have the two wide players I think there should, there'll be more it's balls be coming more in the in. box this time and he, he would be one that would be quite interesting to see if he could uh, do better than he did last year because he had something but not enough to play as that yeah. long striker or it didn't have the service well I noticed in the last pre-season game against Las Palmas and we're beating 1-0 um, that were kind of the first sort of challenge like the first sort of um, competitive um pre-season we, we played really you know the team that he set up were kind of the, the kind of the best that he had available at him at the time I thought and and you could see then like on on the widths like Alioski were pinging balls in left right and centre so you may be like Bielsa's kind of saying I want balls in the box but we've got Roof who Roof's not a big lad and yeah. Roof's a good finisher when, when he kind of has the opportunity but it wasn't kind of well when you when you're against two big centre halves and, and you're not a big lad. He's, he's never got a chance. But so like 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 you said last season, Lasaga, he were a big lad. He, he when balls were going in, he was quite threatening. Um, so for me, is Bamford going to kind of get get on the end of these? But I think Bamford's a bit of a cleverer player than than uh, as a striker anyway than um, than Roof. So maybe he can just you know he can make positions a bit better for himself so I, I'm really positive about it I would like to see uh, a, another striker whether it be a number 9 or 10 because like I said Bamford can play both so um, 
you know, if we get number nine, great. We we can have a big lad up front with yeah. Bamford sat behind, or or if we get um, a very clever number ten, I'd happily have Bamford up front and and um, a number ten because because Vidra is like that. Vidra can play kind of number nine or ten as well. So them two would be a good partnership if we, you know, if we can uh, afford to. Well, I don't want Leeds to pay daft wages. To be perfectly honest, we we're, we're not we're not at that level yet. But um, if he as a reality check it'd be great to have him <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like yeah. he was asking I don't know what how much rumoured 50 60k a week that's Premier League oh, wages wow. so we that can't is. be paying that but it's all rumours who, so. who knows we yeah. won't sign the office with him won't we but then there was some <laughs> rumour that he's well his agent or whoever his representative made excuses saying oh it fell through because he didn't want to play for a team that finished below Derby now that's a load of BS because I'm not being funny <laughs> if you look at Leeds United last season to Leeds United <clears> now we, we're on a mission we've got this new manager we've got these Completely much, different animal, much isn't be- it? Much better players yeah, yeah, yeah. brought into the club. You know, we, we're not we, we're 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 not aiming this season to be sat in seven, eight, ninth, tenth position. We want to be in that top two, no. top six at least. And the, and the last yeah. time I looked, the season finished in the first week of May, so the the, the table didn't change much over May and June. Yeah, exactly. So I'm sure he realised that uh, <laughs> yeah. when the Plus season got, finished. There's yeah. a new manager at Derby. Who knows how Frank Lampard's going to do? Really? Down Ex- there. Exactly. They, they, I mean, and there's rumours that they're going to be it by financial fair play. Hence, having to try and offload him. Right. So, I see. Um, so. so they could be. They could have a, a couple of cash strapped seasons, really. If, if you know, if you'd like to believe what's signed, what, what you hear. So, in in, I mean, I'm always going to be by some Leeds United fan. But if I were a, a striker of his quality, I'd be looking, going, you know what? I like Derby, I like the lads here and everything. But they're looking like they're in a bit of a turbulent patch with financially behind the scenes. Look at Leeds United; they've got a very reputable manager in. They've got an owner who's actually putting some money into the club for the first time in a long time. Yeah, I'll go over there and try and get into Premier League with them. That's that's what I'd say. I tend to agree with you. I yeah, tend yeah. to agree with you. Okay, final chance to win some VIP tickets. Okay, uh, all you need to do is identify the famous Leeds United player or manager from the following clues and be in with a chance to win uh, Leeds United versus Bolton. VIP luxury tickets. Uh, two seats in the box are up for grabs. All you need to do is answer and review. Uh, go to your favourite podcast app, download the latest episode of LS11, like, subscribe, leave a five-star review, put your answer and your Twitter or email address in the comments and we'll pick two winners in next week's show. So your clue so far, I'm a centre forward who scored 59 goals for Leeds United. Leeds signed me from Celtic for six million pounds and I was captain of Australia in the 2006 <laughs> World Cup finals in Germany. Uh, if you haven't got that by now, uh, then good lord, come on. <laughs> I don't think we can spell it out any, no, any no. easier for you. Uh, we've had so many comments coming in, it's, we're never going to get through them all. Um, but uh, this is one that's actually um, uh, from Graham Jordan. Was Simon ever approached to come back? Now, I think with Leeds United, a lot of a lot of fans always sort of like look back on things. And, and oh, we love to look back, don't we? Or bring back Becky O. Or I think uh, bring back Gradle for about the last bring six back years. Back Gradle. Uh, yeah. I, think, I don't know if, if that's the same with every football club. They sort of look back to sort of things. But with managers, you know, that's, it does happen that managers go back to clubs. Is that something that's, that's ever come across your table before? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I, re- I was at Preston um, and I got approached. I, I can't remember. I think it might have been after Hockaday left. Uh, would I want to come back? And obviously my head, uh, my heart wanted to come back. My head was in the balance I met. Chilino at the time and after meeting him <laughs> I just decided that this isn't the right thing to, for me to do it's sort of one of them scenarios where I thought yeah of course I would want to go back I, th- I felt again the old cliche I've got a bit of unfinished business I wanted to come back and try and fulfill what I'd set out to do in the first place by trying to get back to the Premier League but after meeting him I just felt that that wasn't the right thing to do it, it was sort of wrong at that stage of the time when I was at Preston I was working with good people I was in a secure job um, and decided that it wasn't the right thing to do and um, I think the next manager they brought in the, the, the sacked him after 16 games or maybe Darko less Darko Milinic yeah, I think, wasn't maybe yeah, not yeah. even that many so yeah. there was that instance and then obviously, and then obviously, uh, when Thomas Christensen left um, I had a phone call would have been interested about coming back Um but then they decided to go down a different avenue with Paul Eggenbottom. So, yeah, one one was in my hands that I turned down. The second time last summer, last, last towards the back end of last year, wasn't uh, wasn't my decision because I was out of work and I'd certainly would have come back last time. 
Wow, so close, eh? Yeah, very, very close. I think that. Well, I think there's a lot, a lot of Leeds fans that would have been really, really happy to to to, to see you back. I think uh, you know you must be sort of quite quite happy that you know, you'd get that sort of welcome back to Leeds United. Yeah, look at that. I, I mean, love this city. I love the football club. Um, obviously, live the other side of the Penans at this moment in time, but I do spend a lot of time coming back over here. And, and every time I come over, the people wanting pictures, talking to you all the time. Um, and it is, it's it's nice to be sort of have that sort of uh, support from the supporters because they appreciate what I did at the time and um, who knows what the future holds or anything like that for, for Leeds United for myself etc uh, and other things but yeah it was um, it's nice to be held in high regard I mean I, I used to love it when Cy used to come back with his previous teams because Leeds fans should call you Agent Grayson <laughs> because Agent you, Grayson that's right yeah because yeah. <laughs> you never had a, a fantastic record against Leeds United but, and Leeds fans would be sort of just chanting like Simon is Leeds fan and all sorts of stuff so Leeds fans obviously care a lot about Simon and, yeah. and what he's done for the club so that, that's brilliant really because there's not really a lot of managers that, that have left that they can really say that really I but, can't remember but, another but one to be honest, recent memory anyway it's probably like a lot of football clubs so it'll, it'll be the same as a football club you love one of your own and Simon's one of our own so um, you know regardless of him obviously um, unfortunately leaving Leeds and managing various other clubs it's still regarded as one of our own believe me every time I did come back and manage a team against Leeds United I was desperate to try <laughs> and get three points for my employers there was yeah. no agent stuff even no. and, but it's weird like even Boxing Day we played at Preston and I said to Jermaine come, come on come on come on and affect the game well he did he got sent off after about <laughs> yeah. five minutes yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember that but came it, on and elbowed somebody at first didn't he walked yeah. off like salute on the way off maybe yeah, well no know. he didn't <laughs> <laughs> he got a glare from his manager believe me <laughs> <laughs> and a fine to follow did you always enjoy, enjoy coming back as, as, a, as an opposition manager because I'd imagine that that is it's an interesting situation when you come back to a club that you've previously yeah managed. obviously um, you're focused on what you're trying to do but it is it's not easy as well because when the supporters are singing your name to give them a wave and there's no way I would disrespect the clubs that I'm working for yeah. by giving Leeds fans a, a wave because when I'm the opposition manager because I'm employed yeah. by somebody else I'm desperate to get three points um, so I did fact it is not easy to do I think the what the best most enjoyable game was probably the last game of um, first season in championship with Preston we played Leeds last game of the season there's nothing riding on it at one stage the whole ground was singing my name with the Leeds fans and the Preston fans <laughs> I see a, you see a, a bloke in the Leeds end coming down on a surfboard how he managed to get into that <laughs> and Leeds try and taunt you, fans try and taunt you into try and getting a wave out of you and so I waited till about five minutes from the end and it was a, a, a recognition of my um, my su su love to them supporters as as them back to me. So, but I wasn't doing it in the first minute when they started it because <laughs> I had a job to do, and, and that's how I will always continue to be. No, I've had a couple of texts. Go for one it. One off Gary Davenport from the Leeds Talking United Shots. Talking Shop podcast, which is very good. Says the fullback was Jones, of Bristol fullback right, Jones. Yes, that's right. Yeah, um, well and done. one off Dave Best. Pigeon Detectives base hey, player it, extraordinary. Sir. says Simon will I see you at Leeds Festival this year hopefully yes yep. uh, as I've got nothing to do that weekend uh, I think I'll be going <laughs> to yacht races on, in the afternoon and then up on the Friday afternoon to see uh, the bands Cortinas and Kings of Leon so no doubt uh, we'll be in uh, Melvin's Dave said he'll buy you a beer in Melvin's. Oh, yeah. Melvin's is a free <laughs> bar. <laughs> Melvin's is a free bar. Well, Melvin is Melvin Ben, isn't Melvin it? Melvin yeah. Ben, who yeah. yes. Festival yeah, Republic. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, I was going to talk about it. Could you like a gig, uh, Simon? It's, it's fair to say. And I've said this to, to Ry on occasions. That it, there was a, po a point where every time I'd sort of turn up to a gig, wherever it was, <laughs> Two or three seats down, there would be Simon Grayson, <laughs> where it would be Stereophonics, where it would be the Pigeon Detectives. Um, you do like a gig, and you do like getting out there. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've like I've always liked my music. Um, go to like V Festival for the last twenty years down in Chelmsford or down in um, Telford area, Leeds Festival. Uh, I want to see Paul Eaton, who's a good friend of mine, recently in the Castlefield Ball in Manchester and Isle of Wight, as we mentioned. Um, no, I've, I've loved my, love my music. I would love to do what they do. You know what I mean? Performing in front of an audience. But it's come to the point that I've been mentioning this to my to my partner that she bought me a guitar for Christmas. Oh really? So <laughs> I thought, right, here we go. I'm out. I was out of work at the time, so I yeah. thought, right, get some Plenty lessons. Plenty of time to practice. Took yeah. it. Took it out the um, the case. 
Googled, um, got to on, on, uh, on the internet about how to learn the guitar. Yeah. Thought, this isn't for me, and I've not got it out <laughs> since. <laughs> so now I've got some free time. Do you know anybody who knows how to play the guitar? I don't really <laughs> know that many level. people. It's a, dec a decent, a decent level. level no. You play a little bit, don't you? Yeah, not a decent level. To be fair. Yeah, <laughs> but no, I've, 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 been, I've been fortunate. I've been to a lot of quite good friends with the lads at Kasabian as well. So I've seen them in Ireland and many other venues. So I, whenever I get opportunity to to go and watch some live music, I do. And, and very fortunate position that. Uh, I know quite a lot of musicians who, who look after you as well, to the point of where did I see you lot down in back Northampton once. Northampton once, yeah. We did this really weird um, kind of nightclub tour thing. And um, yeah, it, it, I got a message off Sai saying, I've heard you playing like, down here. I'm next, uh, next town across wherever there, you are. Yeah. And um, I said, yeah, yeah, come along. And came along and just dingy sort of weird nightclub thing. And... We had a few beers, had a yeah, good laugh, yeah. gig well, were all right, you know, it's just well, what I it is. say it was all right, it was, <laughs> it was, it was below brilliant. average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, no, it's, it's, it's all good fun. I mean, it's quite fun, actually, because when we're playing Leeds, like, Sy will turn up, and, um, like, last time we played Leeds, two nights at Leeds, and Josh Warrington were at one night, and oh, right, yeah, yeah. the fans half at times end up singing songs to Simon or Josh Warren I've, I've seen us. it I've and seen I think it. Matt, Matt turned around at one point going uh, come on we're, we're here <laughs> yeah. like um, we went off for the encore when Josh Warren when we came back on and the Josh were to the side of the stage well up on the balcony area to the, the right hand side and basically we kind of walked on stage and all the crowd were just stood to the right hand side looking not looking forward at the stage looking at what, what they are doing then they were just all chanting Josh Warrington and everything like Matt like <clears throat> we're back on stage um, do you want another song or what <laughs> but it, it, it's sort of quite strange that sort of a lot of footballers who are into the music just you get the opportunity to speak, speak to musicians all we want to do is talk about their experiences and, yeah. and what mm. they, how they perform and what it's like and, and all them things that go with it and on the reverse of that all the other times um, you speak to musicians they just want to be f footballers or talk about football all the time so it's sort of if we could swap for a day it'd be interesting how we do I, I've had charity games where I've put on um, games and, and got Simon from the Kaiser Chiefs and, and other lads to come and play for Chris Edwards from Cassini been and they come and played for me, and they're and they're all right. Simon's average, Chris is a little bit better. I'm not I'm not invited Ryan yet, and uh, but <laughs> they do it because they enjoy the football. If they'd asked me to go to the, in the studio with them, I wouldn't. I would absolutely petrify myself, be <laughs> terrified of because I'm out of my comfort zone. But I would love to be able to do something like that. But one, you've got to be able to perform and be able to play an instrument and also be able to sing, and I can do neither. <laughs> <laughs> well, a guitar, you never know. You never yeah, know, we'll, help, Ryan. we'll get you a triangle sign if you can play that. <laughs> I might struggle with that. To be fair. <laughs> uh, well, we're pretty much uh, run out of time. Look, we've had so many uh, comments uh, coming in this morning, uh, a ridiculous amount of comments. Mike saying, love to see uh, Simon Grayson busking in Leeds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If he does take up yeah. the... Uh, uh, I am unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone wishing you uh, well and hoping uh, that you're getting a job uh, very very soon um, uh, get the presenter to ask Simon to give us all a wave before the show finishes so I'll, I'll get if you, if you wave into that camera there there you go uh, there you, perfect there you go <laughs> absolutely perfect um, uh, Simon thank you so much for, for coming in this morning no really worries. really appreciate your time it's, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure it's been, yeah, it's been good thank chat. you for coming in yeah, si. no worries, anytime. thank you very much brilliant stuff. we were trying to get Simon last year with the uh, well PS, PSFC which it used to be called the podcast that's um, dead to us now that's dead to us it's dead to us it's now LS11 um, but uh, you got you got the Bradford job when uh, when we first started doing this and, oh, that's right yeah and it was just kind of like timings and everything so it's great that you could come on side because I've had a few people just kind of um, say yeah I'll come on and then never reply to my text so at least uh, Simon's true to his word good lad no worries least, well, 10 guitar lessons that's worth <laughs> ten, I'll, I'll give you 10 guitar God, lessons I might take more than that <laughs> <laughs> And you need to learn three chords. That's so basically we, the whole you know of the something? Beatles back catalog. Graham Lambert, who from the Inspiral Carpets, tweeted, uh, sent me a message yesterday, and it says it only takes three. You only need to know three chords. I says, well, it's three more than I know at this <laughs> moment in time. <laughs> uh, well, before we go, quick score prediction for the weekend. It's the first time we've been able to do this. So it is. Yeah. Leeds against Stoke, Leeds Stoke. Sunday after. Was it four thirty kick off? Four thirty kick off. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, what, what do you reckon? I think it's going to be a tough one. I think Stoke is mm, serious, hard. serious challenge challenges, and it'd be interesting to see if they lose any of their players, any of their good Jack. Butler 
Scotland still at the, in the squad. And there's rumours that Peter Crouch might be going to Burnley for half a million quid. Oh. I was reading yesterday, so it'd be interesting to see what their squads like Peter come Sunday. I know it's bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> um, so um, no, that'd be interesting. But um, I think it'd be really tough, regardless. And we we've got some new players in, but they won't be settled yet. They've only just arrived. I can't ever bet against Leeds. So I'm going to say one all. One all, Simon. To be fair, that's what I was thinking. I think Leeds would be happy with the draw. I'm not I'm saying they'd love to yeah. be winning the game. Everybody yeah, wants to yeah. win the opening game of the season. But given the level of opposition, and the, it's still going to take time for the players to settle in. I think if you get off to um, a positive start, to, to a matter of fact, then I think 1-1 would be a decent result against yeah, a strong opposition. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, what yeah. do you think, Darren? I do think a, a score draw. Uh, I think yeah. if we can get away with that, uh, a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two, yeah. um, would be uh, fantastic. I think, you know, like like. Someone says everybody wants to win their first game, but yeah. up against Stoke, you just sort of think. And all the new players aren't bedded in quite yet, and yeah. everything. You know, it's system so might be quite new to yeah. them. But I don't know. Patrick Bamford hat trick three 0 But no, <laughs> no, yeah, that'd be brilliant. But no doubt it's going to be electric over the road. I'm gutted I can't make the game. I'm at, You're at uh, a wedding, aren't you? I'm at a friend's wedding, which is going to be a brilliant day um, for them. But I might have my Sky sort of go on, on in my pocket, you know. <laughs> You're not best man or anything, are you? I'm not. No, no. Okay, so I've, right. I've got like, right, I've, I've got light duties. <laughs> so I was, you know, I just uh, entertain the wife and buy her drinks, and I'll be just sneaking off to watch footy. Good idea. But Good no, it'd be a great wedding. I'm not putting the wedding down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you've missed any of it. Uh, make sure you download the podcast it's going to be available uh, in a short wee while uh, from Audio Boom, Spotify and from iTunes and of course make sure uh, that you get involved in Who Are You those uh, VIP tickets to Leeds versus Bolton at Ellen Road in our box all you've got to do is like, subscribe leave a five star review with the answer to uh, Who Are You in the comments leave your Twitter or your email address as well so we can get in contact with you um, uh, I'm a centre forward who scored 59 goals for Leeds United uh, Leeds signed me for Cel- from Celtic for 6 million pounds and I started my career uh, oh, sorry I was captain of Australia in the 2006 World Cup finals in Germany uh, get involved in that and we'll pick a couple of winners out next week a pair of tickets each for uh, the Leeds against Bolton game once again Simon Grayson thanks very much thank you very much thanks very much Ryan yeah, thank, thank you very you. much yeah, we'll catch cheers. you again next week cheers yes. your midweek fix of Leeds United it's LS11 